How far would you push yourself to not only survive, but to save a life? Let's talk about Nowhere. An appropriate title, as Out of Nowhere is exactly where this film came from and has rapidly became one of Netflix's biggest viral successes of the year. I'm going to discuss the nerve-spiking tension within the film, meaning there will be major spoilers and plot points ahead. Please consider checking out the link below to our second channel, The Horror Exchange. But for now, this is why 2023's Nowhere is Nightmare Fuel. It's a sad yet accurate reality in the world that there are vicious war zones scattered all across the earth in places where families used to live and love together. And when the bullets start to ricochet through the streets, that's the time when those families will do anything to escape and survive. This is the case in the context of Nowhere, with large groups of people attempting to flee a war-torn Spain that has collapsed in tyranny. The very thought of seeing your once idyllic home being ripped apart all because of a corrupt government is horrendous, and Nowhere certainly doesn't shy away from the bitter heartlessness of those spreading the carnage. We see innocent people being killed, children being kidnapped and beaten. It's a truly sickening sight which tragically occurs far too often in the real world. This is very much a sour dose of reality and it's no wonder why our protagonist wants to escape it. Her name is Mia, played superbly by Anna Castillo, travelling with her husband Nico, who aimed to escape Spain to Ireland via a shipping container, along with many other passengers. And the importance of this is far more than just their own survival. Mia is pregnant and close to her due date. But when things get a little heated and rifles are tilted upright, the two become separated from each other, and that becomes a substantial factor throughout the rest of the film. However, for now, Mia is all alone. One tiny mistake and a bit of a scuffle has led her to become isolated. She's completely surrounded by strangers, the threat of her transporters and the looming danger of being discovered by the evil military. Just imagine what must be going through her mind in these instances. What percentage chance she has of actually reuniting with Nico again. Thankfully, they do have phones that they use to communicate with each other from a phone but they only have so much battery. The only thread connecting them is their love for each other and the hope of reuniting in these desperate times. But in easily the film's most barbaric scene, Mia barely keeps that thread connected. When their shipping container is opened up by the military and their false sense of trust is utilised to bring the refugees out, the guns are raised. Everyone is butchered while Mia hides quietly. Well, as quietly as she can. It's unashamed rough viewing, especially when we've previously seen people holding their infant babies in their arms while being transported, so you only need to connect the dots here. But if you can't, we get one sole teary-eyed child remaining unharmed, until one more shot is fired. Oh man, it just... No, 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 no. This entire opening passage of Nowhere is perhaps the most potent nightmare fuel I've experienced with a Netflix release since the most recent All Quiet on the Western Front. It all feels too real, with very real risks, stakes, and consequences. It sets the viewer up to recognise the pressure all around Mia in this world. Now she's got nobody to protect her, while gun barrels and eagle eyes want her dead on sight. The aura of the world Nowhere establishes is one in which you can feel in your bones just how rocky the odds against Mia really are. However, it's the rocky seas which carve a brand new path for the film, carrying it into uncharted waters. Literally. During a wild storm, Mia's shipping container is thrown overboard, so that when she wakes, she is stranded in the middle of the ocean. Very little food and water, a random assortment of supplies, a floating container full of ever-seeping bullet holes, and a baby on the way. This is now the battleground Mia finds herself in, an 8 by 20 foot metal box quickly emptying of all the things Mia needs, while quickly filling up with everything she doesn't. Situational movies like these
movies have always had a big pull factor with audiences, especially in recent times. A small cast, even a one-hander like this film, in a huge spot of bother against the odds where the chance of survival is minute, and it's up to their internal drive to steer them through the storm. There are many examples of this kind of film. People have been comparing the tension they've experienced in nowhere to what they felt watching 2022's Fall, which I've previously covered in an episode, but I didn't necessarily find myself emotionally invested in the characters in Fall. Here though, I was all behind Mia. I think that there were quite a few moments that helped this. She's likeable, we've seen the barbaric horrors that she's seen, she has some creative instinctive methods of using the supplies around her, and when she ultimately gives birth to her baby daughter, Noah, another level is added. She's not just trying to keep alive and find salvation, she's trying to keep her child breathing and fed. She's trying to reconnect with the lost love of her life, and as we learn slightly later in the film, she's already lost her previous daughter Uma during the Spanish conflict. Mia is a grieving mother who cannot go through losing another child. She feels responsible for what happened to Uma, so now she converts all of her pain into energy to make sure the same doesn't happen to Noah. Because of this, I think that Mia is one of the most empowering and inspirational female characters I've seen in film, possibly this decade so far. These kinds of films put you in the state of mind where you go, what would I do if I I was in that situation. I mean, Christ, Mia goes through the ringer here. It's just scene after scene of physical and mental anguish for her, like she's not just trapped in a container, but a torture chamber. The bullet holes of the shooting she saw are all around her at all times, reminding her of that moment. While she's being thrown all around the container, slowly getting closer to sinking, she gave birth to her baby during a thunderstorm at night without anaesthetic and had to keep up the energy to provide for both of them. Despite having two phones, one gets a cracked screen and is barely workable, and the other becomes water damaged, limiting her vocal reach for help, and to Nico. And later, when she drills a hole in the roof to sit outside, an excited run for a reflective shard to signal a plane leads to Mia slicing open her thigh and having to perform DIY stitching with the few applicable resources she has. It's a nasty concoction of events that Mia endures here, with plenty of psychological trials and tribulations, as well as physical ones, slowly draining her away while holding onto every last ounce of love she has. It's no wonder why Nowhere caught so many imaginations when its premise popped up on the Netflix homepage. People get invested in these scenarios, and I can truly envisage this one being somewhat of an iconic one in years to come. I can see people just seeing a shipping container and bringing this film up as a reference, where all of the memories of its audience can flood back. Not only is Nowhere suspenseful and frightening, one of the best survival movies of its kind from the last decade, but it's full of authentic heart and authentic pain all the same. It's a reminder that love can guide you through rough waters, but it doesn't ever make you forget just how rough those waters are. From escaping civil war, to separation, to bloodshed, to children being massacred, to isolation, to clinging onto life with every fibre of hope left. It all leads to an exhilarating watch. Things get even worse for Mia too when Nico gets in touch with her, informing her that he has been shot and is losing blood rapidly. They have a beautiful touching final exchange together before we put two and two together and face Nico's death. Mia didn't even have the luxury of getting back to her husband. They didn't find their salvation together. He couldn't die beside her and he never got the chance to see his daughter's face. Thankfully, they do have a small exchange, which is bittersweet, but overall, it's such a cinematic gut punch of devastating proportions so that even when Mia and Noah are found by an Irish family at sea, Mia is incomplete. There's no true happy ending here, no perfect realignment. Even though Mia has seen it through and Noah is still alive, Mia still holds the loss of Nico and Uma. She's a widow and a single mother in a foreign land. It's a remarkably bleak yet hopeful ending, like a silver lining to a cloud, to what was a stroke of genius production, making the most of its minimal concept. It's captured imaginations all around the world in a very short 
space of time. And fundamentally, it's made hearts pound. So in that case, all considered, 2023's Nowhere has earned a spot on the Unleash the Ghouls Nightmare Fuel Hall of Fame. But do you agree that it should belong there? Let us know all your thoughts on Nowhere in the comments below. Once again, I've been Connor from UTG. Thank you very much for watching and I'll join you once again on the horizon of the ocean with a container full of Nightmare Fuel. Thank you.